as to what we can expect from Biden and his outgoing administration, well, the deliveries of attackers, missiles, and uh, the way they allowed uh, the British and the French to to use their own uh, missiles. Well, this is in a way an attempt to leave as bad a legacy as possible to the next administration. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. November 23rd, 2024. Let's get into it. Uh, the most important story, I want to get it out of the way first. I'll see if I can find anything more on it. But the, uh, the French have decided uh, they want World War III along with the United States and Great Britain. And they've given uh, Ukraine permission to use the scout missiles. Now, I just uh, I just want you to think about that. I mean, what more warning do the Russians need to give that they're not effing around? I mean, when that when that uh, ICBM, or whatever you want to call it, intermediate range uh, nuclear missile hit that, uh, that, uh, that plant, that weapons plant, and just demolished it, I mean, it, that would that and and you, you know that that thing, that missile can go anywhere in Europe. It's got the range to hit anybody. And now they're going to f around and tell him, "Oh yeah, we're going to keep launching uh, long-range missiles into Russia." I just want I, I want you to just think about that. Suppose that Russia gave Mexico long-range missiles and they were launching them into the United States. Do you think we would put up with that? No, we would not. I, you know, I, I guess it's just going to take something really dramatic. So my guess is the next hit might be on Kiev. Uh, and, and if they hit Kiev, it's going to be a decapitation blow to go ahead and take out the uh, Ukrainian uh, leaders, you know, uh, Zelensky and probably his entire cabinet. I mean, at that, that, least that wouldn't escalate into nuclear war but you know what i wouldn't blame the russians if they hit france you know i don't i'm hoping that we're not going to send any more attackums in there maybe maybe somebody at the pentagon got the message although the rumor is it's not the pentagon that has given permission for those attackums to, to be shot in there that, that, that this is basically a cia operation so the cia is following uh, the, the biden administration's lead and, you know, you know, it ain't Joe Biden. I mean, that's another question. Where in the hell are Joe Biden and Kamala? <laughs> I haven't seen them since the election. Have you? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I guess Biden was down in Brazil for a while there. But uh, and they did, you know, they, Mr. Biden, Mr. Biden, will you answer a question, Mr. Biden? And he just kept on walking. <laughs> that was crazy. But, I, you know, I, what kind of idiots are these people? I mean, you can't keep poking the bear, man. I mean, we, I, they want the world to go up in flames. These are not, these are evil people. Macron, I mean, what the hell? They must have some sort of demonic wish. You know, maybe Satan's barking in their ear or something and says, let's destroy the world. I mean, seriously. And Scott Ritter, by the way, he's going to have a march on December the 7th. And they're going to they're gonna protest it in Washington, D.C. Uh, and say, no, no, no more poking the bear. We don't want nuclear war. Uh, I don't know how many people are going to join him. He's got some big names that are going to go. So if, you, if you're in in that area or want to go, I, can, I know I can. I'm you know, going down here in Florida. And plus I can't physically, you know, my, my broken neck. But anyway, that's enough on that. Uh, the, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, I think is a, another important story was I finally got the lowdown it was actually Eric Erickson. I was just listening to him, and he gave us the lowdown on the Pennsylvania election and why 
what's going on and why it's taking so long. And uh, so what happened was the, the Supreme Court uh, and, the, and the, the legislature of Pennsylvania passed a good law and they said that you can't uh, uh, count votes that don't have a signature, uh, that aren't dated properly, or that came in too late, okay? And, uh, and so you say, okay, well then that, that sounds pretty good. You know, that, that would be good. And but the, the way Pennsylvania works and the reason why they, they, they can't start counting votes until the night of the election, you know, what was it, November 5th, at 7 o'clock. So, so that's why, you know, here in Florida, we count the absentee ballots ahead of time so that, you know, the only votes we have to count on election day are uh, the, uh, the, the regular votes. I mean, you know, the people that go to the polls and vote. So that's why, we, you know, our count was done that night. That seems to me the way you would want to do it. So what, what happens in Pennsylvania is, okay, so if a ballot comes in and it's an illegal ballot, okay, no signature, no date, uh, or something else is messed up about it, it goes into a one pile, okay? And then the, the, uh, the, the good ballots, the, the envelope comes in, the signature is verified, the date is verified, and then the ballot is taken out of the envelope. And also, you know, the, the, the signature has to match what's on file, of course. So it's taken out of the, the envelope and, and put on the side, okay? And now the, you don't know it's an anonymous ballot, okay? So you can never go back and check that ballot again to see if it's a legitimate ballot or not, all right? You get in the picture now? And then also Pennsylvania doesn't have any way of like, you know, another, like other states here in Florida, you know, we, we, we know the number of ballots we sent out. We know the number of ballots we got in. And, you know, if you get in more ballots than you sent out, something's fishy, right? Well, Pennsylvania doesn't monitor that. So there's no way to know uh, how many ballots went out or how many ballots came in. They, I don't know why they don't monitor it. It doesn't make any sense to me. So what the Democrat counties are doing is okay, they, all those ballots that went in the pile that are illegal ballots, they're taking those ballots out and they're running them through the machines to count them. Now you're saying, well, how, how are they doing? It's illegal, okay? But who's going to arrest them? It's a Democrat state. Nobody goes to jail. And uh, Laura Trump said she was going to go down there and try to do something about it. But what are you going to do? I mean, if the, if the police are not going to uphold the law of the Supreme Court of, of Pennsylvania, it sounds like they're not, you know, how are you going to keep them from counting those illegal ballots? And then you say, well, okay, we could always take those illegal ballots out. Well, I just described to you that you can't because the ballot, it's an anonymous ballot once it's out of the envelope. So that's, that's what they're doing and they're trying to cheat and win the election. I just, you know, could you do that? I mean, I've got too much integrity. Uh, I wouldn't do that even for, you know, if, I, if a Democrat was winning, I just, I wouldn't sit there and start counting illegal ballots. Plus, you know, here in Florida, you go to jail. It's un unlike, because we're a Republican state. Anyway, that's that's the scoop on that. And then, uh, oh, the illegal immigrants. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Well, you know that, uh, well, the first thing was the uh, um, the Attorney General, Pam Bowles. I, was, I put that up in the last video that she's the new nominee. If you don't know who she is, she was the Florida Attorney General here. I can't remember the years from up until like 2019. She's also been working as a lawyer for Trump for quite some time. Uh, and she's a, she's a pet bull. You know, isn't it amazing how a misogynist, that's what they called Trump, you know, he's a misogynist. He's putting a lot of women in his cabinet, don't you think? Don't you think? And there's another woman, I'll get the, we're gonna do a reading here in just a minute, that's coming out of uh, uh, Oregon, okay? And may, may I'll just put her name up above, because uh, I got the the, um, the the X post, but I wanted to tell you about her, because that's a really interesting pick. She is uh, uh, she's pro union. I mean, remember that the, the unions all voted against Trump. The Teamsters said that they weren't going to, you know, uh, endorse Trump, and here he's putting a pro union person in charge of uh, uh, I can't remember, but it's it's. It's the portion of the government that's, you know, and so she's, when I say pro-union, she's against the right to work laws that are in, I think it's 23 states. So in other words, you, you know, the, the right to work laws just mean you, you can work without a union. Well, she's, 
she's uh, she's against that law and she's saying she, that people should be allowed to gather i think some of those right to work laws you know are totally written to uh, to make it really difficult to form a uh, a union or or you maybe an illegal altogether so that's a uh, that, that that was just interesting to me that here he, we've got somebody that's pro union that Trump just put in and the democrats are supposed to be the the union party uh, all right, so now let's get on to illegal immigrants. We'll talk about that for just a minute. Was the uh, uh, what the Democrats are saying is that uh, if we deport all of the illegal immigrants, who's going to pick the cotton? Who's going to who's going to pick the vegetables? Who's going to work in restaurants? Who's going to take care of grandma? So they're, they're hitting you know, hitting up with with that argument. Well. Don't you think that's a little bit racist? <laughs> I mean, you know, they're saying that we need serfs to do all of these jobs. I mean, you know, so, so I guess they're going to be in the, all the illegal immigrants. Maybe the plan is they're going to be indentured servants to the Democrats, because uh, you know, the only reason that you know illegal immigrants would do those jobs is because they're paying too little. That Americans wouldn't want to take them, so that just means the corporations are are getting over. That's fascism. Well, it's fascism and it's racist. <laughs> you know, the Democrats, I swear, even their talking points are stupid, don't you think? We're going to have to turn around here. We're getting, this is a short trail. I just, just wanted to talk about that. So, and then also, if you listen to, um, gosh, I'll put his name up above, the guy uh, that that's, the, the borders are that Trump nominated. He said, for the first thing we're going to do is deport the criminals. So uh, that's going to take a while. I mean, that probably take a year right there. We're going to get the drug drug gangs out of the country. So that has that has nothing to do with picking cotton, does it? And then the, the, the next level will be, uh, uh, what was this, the, the pecking order? Well, probably the people that uh, Biden brought across. And by the way, we got a, we got a video. I'm going to show you this right now. This is a, because I, this was a good question. You know, I, I, I always thought about this. Why, why can't Californians or people in Arizona or, or even Texas sneak across the border, right? You know, especially the homeless. I'm talking about the homeless, okay? So if you're a homeless person, why can't you go across the border and then come back as an illegal alien? <laughs> and so a guy, this video, let's watch that video right now. We know migrants receive a lot of benefits. What are some of the benefits that they receive? Uh, about $2,000 a month in cash, about $1,500 in like uh, the food stamp beneficiaries, like SNAP, SNAP benefits. They'll get about $1,500 in that. A phone that's paid for two years that they don't have to worry about and housing over their head for at least three months minimum until they can actually get put into a process. And is it expensive to live here? Yeah, you can't even find a studio for less than 1600 a month. And that's a one bedroom. And they're getting free housing. And they're getting free housing. Have you ever considered hopping over the fence and then coming back as an illegal? Yes, but it does not work. It does not work. You have you done it? Yes, I have. And it did not play out correctly at all. I was let know that you could spend up to seven years minimum federal time. Wow. Right. So you could go to jail for trying to come in as an illegal, but the illegals can come in. If you, could you benefit, could you need, get any help from the government that would help you in your life right now instead of them giving it to illegals? Yes, if I was able to receive the benefits that they're receiving, I wouldn't have to work two jobs just to supply a house for me and my girl. I'd actually be able to work one and welcome our son into our life. Okay, so so he, he actually came up with the same idea that I had. You know, that the guy had a good argument, you know. I mean, so here... They're putting all that money into the illegal aliens, but yet, you know, a homeless guy can't go across the border and get any money out of the Democrats. Now, what does that tell you about the Democrats? Oh, my God. That's crazy. So, uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get, the, get a reading here in just a minute. Uh, I'm trying to think, was there anything else on the illegal immigration? Mainly the, just the packing order. And uh, so you can see, and then the other one, the idea that I had... That guy that killed uh, Lake and Raleigh. Okay, I, I don't consider I he got life in prison. I talked about that in the last video. That now the taxpayers are going to have to take care of this guy for the rest of his life. I think that's bullcrap. So what I would do, if uh, I think it's Tom Horton, is that his name? The Bulbers are. Anyway, I would uh, I would deport him. All right, and but 
just pretend you're deporting him. When the plane gets really up nice and high, accidentally uh, he, he, he fell out of the plane. Ah, dag, damn it, I can't believe he fell out of the plane. What, what, what can you say? You know, uh, but that, that, that would be my, uh, my choice right there. Oh, well, and that, that, and that solves the death penalty. I think good, good way to, good way to go. All righty, that's it. Uh, let's, let's pull up and we'll get some, uh, get some more of the news right now. All right, so uh, Russian forces have reportedly significantly expanded their zone of control at Easter Kupansk after bringing in reserves. They have also reportedly advanced in the industrial area and have consolidated their positions. Extremely heavy fighting is ongoing. Uh, that's from uh, AMK Mapping. It's kind of cold, okay? So, <laughs> so you see me shaking. <laughs> it's only about uh, 50 degrees out here, and you see I'm not really quite dressed for it. I didn't know it would get this late in the day. Uh, can anyone explain this? How the heck does Kentucky elect both Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell? <laughs> I thought that was a good one. <laughs> so, oh, that graphic's up above. All right. And uh, this is Philip Giraldi, and uh, I thought this was interesting. There was a... Uh, there was one item of good news on November 20th when the International Criminal Court in The Hague issued arrest warrants for Benjamin Netanyahu and his recently removed defense minister, Yoff Gallant, Gallant over the uh, clearly demonstrated issue of Israel's de deliberate uh, starving of the Gazans. That means that either of them travels to any one of the 124 countries that recognize the jurisdiction of the court the U.S. and Israel do not, okay? Uh, there is an obligation on the part of those nations to have the accused arrested. Several European countries have already indicated they will they will act on the warrant, and uh, Ireland was one of those. So hats off to the Irish. The Irish. So uh, so we, at least the, these, they can't travel to Ireland, huh? That, that, that's good news. Uh of course, you know, the International Criminal Court is discredited because they said Putin was a child uh, child trafficker, the only child trafficker of the Democrats in the United States. Oh, on that story, I forgot the, you know, in, in the last video, I showed you J.J. Carroll testifying before Congress. And so he later appeared on Redacted. You might go back and watch the, I think it was the Friday episode. And uh, he was talking about you know, his testimony. And, and he said right after he was done, there was a, a, a female Democrat who called him a white supremacist, racist, all kinds of names, just just grilled the hell out of him for like, you know, five minutes. He said he was enraged just sitting there. And, you know, he says the way it goes is they all get their time and then he can't he can't even rebut what it is they were saying. He said it was the most humiliating thing. And he says their lack of empathy or their lack of just uh, any sort of recognition of all the, the, the 300. Oh, that was the... Um, the other one is that they're going to find the 300,000 kids on the illegal immigrants. But he said just that the vitriol, that just, that they're, these are just awful people. He says, I had to sit there and take all that abuse. And he says, he says, I just kept getting angry and angry. He said, I just made my point that, you know, we got to find these kids. And, and they didn't care. The Democrats just don't care about child trafficking. It's unbelievable. So here's uh, one from George Galloway. The only way things with the UK and France supplying and programming storm shadow and scout missiles to be fired from Ukraine deep into Russian Federation. And Ger this is the other tidbit, I forgot about this. And Germany is reconsidering the same with their more potent Taurus cruise missiles. The question of, of heating may be, may be an issue, may, may not be an issue for any of us. We have effectively declared war on Russia and there will be dire consequences for this volley. And that's what I was saying. Pray that we're alive before December 7th. That's, and even Scott Ritter said he, he wouldn't blame. I mean, you know, it's, all it takes is one mistake and we're all dead. You know, and so George Galloway feels the same way. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Tom Homan, that's the guy's name. Real leadership. Breaking Tom Homan says that he and Trump will work to track down the 300,000 missing uh, unaccompanied minors who crossed the southern border during the Biden-Harris administration. So that's uh, wonderful news there. Um, I, I, and this was, uh, Gracie, uh, Nunabiz, and this is very true. I mean, this is the sad part. I suggest, uh, Tom Homan start by looking at the graveyard shifts of every manufacturing and or processing plant and warehouse, then start visiting construction sites and restaurants, chamber of commerce folks, 
and utilizing underage labor by way of day of agencies. Now, I thought that was going to be a different post. When you say graveyard, I mean, that's really where we got to start is in the graveyards. Uh, a lot of those kids are dead now. You know, you can only rape a child so many times before they, they you know, and keep them on drugs before they die. So I, I, my suggestion would be to start with the graveyards, maybe find those. Uh, let's see. Um, what may we, let's see. Here, okay. President-elect Donald Trump said Friday he had chosen Congresswoman Laurie Chavez de Reamer of Oregon to serve as his labor secretary. That, and that's the woman I was talking about. And, uh, to, and it, they said that it sets off alarms because it does go against what we discussed already. Uh, and this is a pretty cool post. Uh, With great technology, the new Russian Alpha-E helicopters from Kalashnikov are multi-purpose drones operating in temperatures. Can you imagine being able to operate in temperatures from negative 30 to plus 45 degrees Celsius and reaching a speed of 15 miles per second? I mean, that's, that's, that's amazing. I tell you, the Russians are advancing their weaponry. I mean, when I saw that uh, intermediate range nuclear missile hit the ground, it what was it, Mach 10 or something? What are, you know, well, you saw Putin. He, he told you exactly what it was. And, and then France comes right out and says, oh, we're going to launch scout missiles. Can you imagine one of those just hitting France? They don't have to tip it with nuclear weapons. Just the kinetic energy alone will destroy whatever they hit. And it's like, what, 37, I don't know, 30-some different projectiles that come out of that thing, and they're going to be hitting the ground at, at 10,000 miles an hour? <sighs> France, you're out of your mind. I hope the people of France know what they're, what's happening. France at war. And this is just one more. I'm just going to finish it off. France just authorized Ukraine to use French scout missiles to strike deep inside Russia. This now makes France a legitimate party in the war and risk Russia attacking France directly. Why has France done this? That's a good damn question. And then uh, this was just one more tidbit. Uh, Republican uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski now, if you don't know Lisa Mikowski, she's out of Alaska. Now, the way Alaska does their elections, it's it's rigged so that the, the Mikowskis, they've been, in, I guess, in power in uh, Alaska for a long time. She would have never won the election if it was a normal election. They do some sort of rating thing, you know, and, the, and then they come in. And, and so she rigged the election so that she could stay. She's a Democrat, but she supposedly is a Republican. But uh, anyway, um, Announces she will not approve any of Trump's nominees unless they are fully vetted by the FBI. Boy, and look at that picture, man. I'll put it up above. She was one ugly woman. <laughs> oh my God! That, that, I, her and Nancy Pelosi would would run a, a ugly contest, don't you think? Man, oh man! Why do senators only have a mandate of their own when it's a conversation about a Republican president, namely Donald Trump, appointing cabinet members? I do want to point out, remember the yesterday I showed you the video of the zero that every single Biden nominee got approved. No problem. OK, all of Trump's nominees are going to go through grilling. Why is that? Why is the Democrats get a free pass? I mean, think of the people that were nominated. Let's just talk about that for just a minute. And we'll just finish off the video right here. You got Pete Buttigieg. We called him. Well, I love Dave. Dave, Dave uh, Rubin calls him gay, gay Pete. You got gay Pete up there to, to, to transportation. Remember, he took, uh, um, what's it called, uh, baby leave? Or, uh, uh, I, gosh, dang it, I'm drawing a blank. I'll put it up above. But he took leave of absence. Nobody even knew he was gone. <laughs> you know, uh, maternity leave, that's it, thank you. He took maternity leave for God knows how long. And, you know, and I guess the transportation department was just running on autopilot, you know. It's same with, look at, look at Lord, Lloyd Eiston. He, he disappeared for a while. Of course, and he also was in charge of the Afghan pullout. That fiasco that got 13 Americans killed. I mean, don't tell me that guy's qualified to be in his position. Then you got uh, the, the head of the CIA, what's his name, uh, Burns or whatever. He just says, yes, man, does whatever uh, um, Biden tells him to do, you, you know. His job really is to, to uh, filter information and, and give Biden the real scoop. I don't think he's doing that. Burns, Bill Burns, whatever it is. Uh, and then let's see. Uh, and then you got, uh, uh, what is that, Rachel? I can't remember. The, the transvestite that's over uh, human services or whatever. I, uh, Rachel McGee, Maveen, I, I can't remember. Anyway, don't tell me that she's qualified or he. 
you know, it's, it's really a he, you know, even though he dresses as a woman, is qualified to run that department. I mean, you can just go down the list of every single one of Biden's nominees. These are the worst people ever to be in those positions. I just, I don't even understand it. Uh, anyway, um, let's, let's see if we got anything else here. The Kremlin has released possible strike locations of NATO facilities across Europe. Those who supplied weapons used against Russia are within legal bounds to be retaliated against. Russian officials, the non-nuclear IRBM, Arshnik, is capable of reaching the UK in 17 minutes. So there you go. And of course, now we got France on that list. I wonder, I wonder it might take 18 minutes to get to France. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I do. Maybe we can get that information. So, and then uh, this is uh, Simon Akdaba. Breaking, Donald Trump explodes in rage, warns Biden and the D.C. establishment are, are trying to drag the United States into a devastating world war, three, three with Russia, and burn the house down before his father gets in to keep, uh, keep stealing the, uh, the billions of dollars going to the military industrial complex. Watch. And then, of course, this is the video. We'll, we'll watch that video right now. Wondering if your father, uh, President-elect Trump, has spoken with President Zelensky or President Putin since Joe Biden gave Ukraine permission to fire U.S. missiles at Russia on Sunday. You know, I haven't heard about it, but uh, I saw that. And I mean, it's absolute insanity. It's like they're trying to settle my father with World War Three by trying to allow uh, this escalation to continue. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Striking the world's largest nuclear superpower by, you know, volume of nuclear warheads uh, with missiles capable of reaching Moscow. They understand that Trump can actually achieve peace. They want to make sure we keep this war going for no other reason, I guess, other than to enrich the military industrial complex in Washington, D.C. that understands that the gravy train stops very quickly. How concerned are you that the Biden team is doing this all deliberately to hurt your father, the incoming president? I mean, what, what other, like, plausible solution is there? I mean, they understand. They saw Russia's comment about it. Maybe it's time we talk about peace. We'd be welcome to that. They saw Zelensky's initial commentary, and all of a sudden, they're sending capabilities to Ukraine that they don't have that could only escalate. It's not going to change the war. It's not like it's going to win it for them in the next 50 days. That ain't going to happen. We understand that. The only thing it could possibly do is escalate and aggravate, again, a world... Uh, uh, the world's largest nuclear superpower. Uh, if Putin feels threatened, if a man of that mentality feels threatened, and he's already said they've changed uh, the level at which they would strike back with nuclear capability, you know, what other plausible solution is it that they, they would rather see World War III than allow my father to be able to achieve peace in a region that only he could probably achieve peace? And I bet he does it quickly. Yeah, your father uh, got a mandate two weeks ago on election day, won the Electoral College, won the popular vote, won all seven battleground states. A lame duck president has never done this, escalated a war in a lame duck period. Um, I know you've got children, I've got children. I'm concerned that we're not gonna make it to January 20th intact for your father to end this war. Um, that's a real concern for a lot of people right now. That is a real concern, and unfortunately, there's so many rhinos, uh, even Republicans uh, in Washington, D.C., who have been telling me for years that Ukraine is the number one issue for Republicans across the country. Uh, you know, I've spoken to a lot of Republicans across the country, over 100,000. I've done the survey live as I'm speaking to audiences of five, 10,000 people, 300 here, whatever it may be, over 100,000 people, uh, and, and basically thus far, zero people. Uh, one person was from Ukraine, so I gave him a pass. He said it was a top 10 issue for him, but it wasn't a top three issue. We could end this thing right now. We could end the ridiculous funds. We could take the 250 billion that we have sent there, plus probably the other 250 billion that the Pentagon lost uh, that they can't account for uh, that has been funding this as a kickback to right. big war, as a kickback to Raytheon, where all these generals who've been aggravating the war because that's where they want to retire. That's going to be their board package. That's their very lucrative off-ramp out of the military. That is exactly what's going on here. So to enrich a couple of people in America uh, at the expense of the American Republic, at the expense of your and my 
children eventually to go fight a war that no one in Washington, D.C. has even been able to articulate to me what victory even looks like. They will do this. Mm. They will try to settle my father with World War III, and then the media will run around and the Democrats, uh, it was Donald Trump's war. This is all his fault. It's absolutely disgusting what's going on. I mean, this is like a bad Tom Clancy movie. It's happening before our eyes, and it's so unnecessary. The American public should be outraged. I think they were. We saw that on November 5th. But the problem is you have that lame duck session for about three months where the Democrats are going to keep their never-ending war rhetoric continuing, and they're going to get us all in a lot of trouble. That's not just America or Russia. That's the entire world is going to suffer the consequences of Democrat insanity. That's what we're witnessing bare forth before our very eyes right now. Yeah, two messages. One for President Zelensky, don't you dare fire another U.S. missile at Russia. And then a message for President Putin would be restraint. In 59 days, the adults will finally, after four years, be back in the room. I hope that President-elect Trump does reach out to both presidents between now and then, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, I'm wondering if you think Joe Biden should resign, or Kamala, who, by the way, is in Hawaii right now. Should she invoke the 25th Amendment? Because clearly Joe Biden, you know, I've said this before, the cheese has slipped off the cracker. But he's not in charge now, Don. I don't think he's been in charge for a long time. I don't think she has either, frankly. It's not like she was number two. I think they're, you know, this is the deep state. This is the 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 gutters of Washington, D.C. This is everything uh, that we have been fighting against for the last nine years. These are the people pulling the levers of power. Again, and that's the uni party. That's not Republicans or Democrats. That's just simply the swamp in Washington, D.C. The American people sent out a very clear mandate on November 5th. They want this insanity to stop. So I do hope that cooler heads prevail, uh, both from Zelensky's standpoint, he probably has nothing to lose. Again, he wants the money to continue, and he understands that the only way to get people to the table is to actually pull that money away. The second that money stops mm. flowing infinitely into Ukraine, all of a sudden, I have a feeling he's going to sit his butt down at the table and start actually negotiating peace. They could have done it at the beginning between the Biden administration and Boris Johnson. They had a peace plan. They scuttled that because they wanted to enrich a few people. The American speak people spoke very loudly. They don't want this to continue. They would love that money, not going to endless war and endless death. They'd love it to actually maybe educate our children or take care of our veterans or fix our crumbling infrastructure or secure our borders so we can stop the scourge of human trafficking and fentanyl coming across our borders on a daily basis. That's what we should be spending our money on, not insanity and not never-ending wars. That part of America is over, and the Washington, D.C. swamp better learn it quickly. Okay. That's it for the video today. Peace out. Stay free. Yeah, I wanted to get this on the video. It's pretty cool. Anyway, there was one other thing that Eric Erickson, I was listening to him. He was talking about RFK Jr., you know. And uh, he was saying that he's a he's a womanizer <laughs> while he was married. And uh, I don't know, he slept with like 30 women and filmed it and gave it to his, uh, his wife because uh, they were going through a divorce. And, uh, and then she commits suicide. So um, who knows? You know, I just uh, I just love this right here, man. Wouldn't it just be fun on a bike? So I might try it. I might try this. I think even with my broken neck, I could probably get my bike over top of this. But anyway, I, I was I didn't know all that about him. Did you? I guess, I assume it's true. He was saying it on the radio. It'd be slander if if it's not true. You know, he could get sued for that. Uh, but yeah, I guess his, his uh, wife committed suicide she hung herself and uh and then of course he was going on with other things that you know uh, that about the vaccines and the stuff that he's going to be doing you know i don't know some of the some of his uh, make healthy uh make america healthy again ideas uh, i I, th I like them but uh anyway you're not always going to get i mean he brought in the thing that eric didn't point out and you know sometimes you gotta sleep with the devil right i mean he brought in a lot of votes for Trump because a lot of people who were going to vote for him. Maybe he could have brought in the brought five percent of the vote over to the Trump team, and that might have been you know the the difference in the race to get Trump over the hurdle. So I you know he didn't point that out. So I I do still say that Trump made the the right decision, but he did say this you know the um, Kennedy is a leftist, and you know he he was a Democrat before. And uh, he's going to have a hell of a lot of power in the Trump administration. What is it? Department of Health and Human Services. So we'll, 
we'll have to see. Uh, he might do some things that we're not going to like. Just wanted to point that out and get that uh, little hump on the trail. That's a cool one. But the gist of it is different. The gist of it is that the so-called golden billion for centuries, for 500 years, they have practically lived off of other peoples. They were ripping apart these poor peoples, poor nations of Africa. They exploited Latin America. They exploited the countries of Asia. And of course, no one forgets this. And I have a feeling that it's not even about the leaders of this country, so even though it is a very important thing, but the common people of these countries, in their heart, they can feel what's happening. They can see our struggle for our independence, for our true sovereignty. And they see this connection with their aspirations to be truly independent, which is exacerbated by the fact that in the Western elites, there is a strong desire to freeze the current unfair state of things. In international affairs. For centuries, they've been stuffing their stomachs with human flesh and they've been stuffing their pockets with money, but they must realize that this ball of vampires is about to end.